Now we're going to do a general overview of uh, the anatomy of the tongue, and then we'll talk about the histology of the tongue after that. To begin with, you know, the surface of your tongue is covered with a lot of uh, small um, pointed projections uh, we know as papillae, specifically filiform papillae. There are other kinds of papillae on the tongue as well, but most of the tongue is covered with these small pointed projections. They're uh, more pronounced on like a cat. If you're familiar with a cat's tongue, you know, it looks like they have little spikes that stick up all over the tongue. Ours are shorter and softer, but still these little pointed projections on the surface of the tongue. The filiform papillae over most of the tongue. Um, the tongue beneath has that connection to the floor of the mouth. So if you looked at how it was connected underneath, if I put a dotted line in here like this, underneath your tongue you have this connection to the floor of the mouth with the frenulum being right here in the middle uh, underneath the front part of the tongue. So it's attached at the base all behind that line all the way back to what we call the root of the tongue way back in here. Now I put a dotted line across uh, the tongue right there and we're going to call that dotted line the sulcus terminalis. Sulcus is usually kind of a groove or a depression, a linear depression in something so it forms a, a little bit of a, a point of change in the surface of the tongue there and uh, in front of that sulcus terminalis, there is a series of special papillae in a row right along there. And these are called circumvallate papillae. Circumvallate papillae, and we'll look at those in more detail here in a bit. Uh, so we have these circumvallate papillae here. On the margins of the tongue, over here toward the side, you're going to see more of what are called foliate papillae, particularly toward the back and side of the tongue over here. They're not out on the surface on the top of the tongue so much, but over here right on the edge where you kind of have a change where your papillae stop and you go to a, a, a soft, thin epithelium underneath of your tongue. That's, that kind of forms the border over here, these foliate papillae. Foliate means like a leaf, like foliage. And uh, I compare them to like a boat oar. It's flattened and broad and uh, they're more squared off uh, on the end. Foliate papillae. Also on the tongue, scattered through here on the surface of the tongue, throughout pretty much all of the tongue, are what are called fungiform papillae. So I'll make a quick little uh, series of sketches here. A circumvallate papillae, if you look at it in cross-section, they have a little uh, groove beside each one, and the top is, forms a little disc, a little patch, it's a little, like a little table sticking up there. Circumvallate papillae, but they're, they're fairly large and visible there at the back of the tongue. Foliate papillae, like I said, are oar-shaped. On the end, they stick out and are flattened. Uh, things. Fungiform, if you were to look at them in cross-section, kind of look like a, 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 a mushroom, that's why they call them fungiform. Looks like a, a puffball kind of thing forming up there. So anyway, we have those. Filiform papillae are all over. And like I said, they make these pointed projections one after the other on the surface of the tongue. And this is all epithelium. Uh, the epithelium, there's a little bit of a core of uh, connective tissue maybe in here and in here. Extensive core of epithelium in a circumvallate papilla, so your epithelium just kind of covers the surface of that there. 
But they're here the epithelium would be uh, all below that. So they don't have a core of connective tissue that comes up into the filiform uh, papillae there. But some of the fungiform do, foliate papillae will, and uh, circumvallate certainly have that core of connective tissue in the papilla. Here we've made a drawing of a uh, taste bud on the tongue, on your circumvallate papillae, on your foliate papillae, and on your fungiform papillae, you'll find taste buds. They're embedded in the epithelial layer, so the epithelium would extend down through here, and there would be a dirt, like papillae, uh, like structures of connective tissue down through here. So this is in the epithelial layer, stratified squamous epithelium, non-keratinized mostly epithelium, on the surface of these uh, papillae extending out here. And in the surface of that, you'll find the opening to what we call a taste pore. A taste pore. So fluids on the surface of the tongue can mix with um, fluid here in the, near the opening of that taste pore to interact with these cells of the taste bud here. Inside the taste bud, we have some cells that have microvilli. So there's a microvillus on a single taste cell. Now that taste cell could be called just a sensory cell or it could be called a gustatory cell. Gustation is the sense of taste. So we have a few taste cells. I've drawn four in this here. And in between the taste cells are other cells we consider supporting cells. Sometimes called sustentacular cells, another name you'll see, sustentacular cells in there. At the base we have cells that are simply called basal cells. And uh, they, the base of all these cells come down and, and find themselves in close contact with nerve endings. So, when these cells interact with chemicals that result in uh, some kind of signaling in there, Sometimes it's a binding, sometimes they pass through the membrane. Some kind of depolarization event is initiated when these uh, microvilli in the ends of the cells come in contact with specific taste um, molecules. So uh, once they're stimulated, they depolarize and they release neurotransmitter down here. The neurotransmitter stimulates the nerve ending to generate an action potential. So that's where the action potential begins. The depolarization of the cell causes release of neurotransmitter in there. So the taste buds. Uh, remember they're on the circumvallate, the foliate, and the fungiform, but not on the filiform papillae of the tongue. And they rest in the epithelial layer on the surface of those papilla types. So uh, a rough drawing here of what's going on inside the tongue and the tongue histology. We have uh, here uh, papillae on the surface of the tongue. I've drawn a series of filiform papillae. They could be fungiform and other forms there. The uh, epithelium up here, this is non-keratinized stratified squamous. Epithelium. It rests on a little bit of loose connective tissue in a mucous membrane. We can refer to that as a lamina propria. But this really resembles the uh, dermis layers quite a bit from the skin. You have a little bit of carryover here, so that's very much like the papillary layer of your dermis. And then below that, we have a dense 
irregular connective tissue very much like your reticular diurea of your dermis. Now in some specimens this will be very thin and there will hardly be any dense irregular connective tissue in there. In some cases there will be a very very thin loose connective tissue layer above your dense connective tissue. But beyond that as you go through into the tongue, into the body of the tongue, you hit this layer that consists of salivary glands, muscle tissue, a lot of connective tissue in between things, a lot of adipose, nerves, vessels, all that going on here. So uh, this is the deep tissue of the tongue. And uh, we'll just make a quick list here. I mentioned salivary glands. And their ducts. Running out of room to write here. Um, skeletal muscle. And it's going in different directions. Some longitudinal, some up and down, some going across the width of the tongue. So we have different directions of skeletal muscle. Adipose. Vessels, nerves, and the connective tissue that's between all the muscle in there. So that makes up most of the body, the deep tissue of the tongue.